Click on database proxies in the left menu, then hit add database proxy. Choose the database proxy that we just created, then hit add. Confirm that your database proxy status says available. Consider this. You have an AWS Lambda function and you want to connect it to Amazon RDS proxy using IAM authentication. Can you do this using the Lambda console? Let's find out. Let's start by navigating to the RDS service, then click on Create Database and choose Standard Create for MySQL. For template, I'm going to choose Free Tier then give my DB instance a name. Choose a master username and password, then scroll down to the connectivity section. Here, I'm going to select my default VPC and default VPC security group and leave all the other settings to their default values, then click on create database. Give it a few minutes for the database to come up, then hit refresh and you should see a database endpoint and the status changed to backing up. Next, click on proxies in the left menu, then click on create proxy. Choose the MySQL family, then give your proxy a name and select database 11, the one that we just created. I'm going to leave the maximum pull connections to 100%, then scroll down to the authentication section. Here, Let's create an IAM role so that the RDS service can access the secrets manager. Head to the IAM service, then click on create role. Choose RDS as the use case, then select add role to database, then hit next. Search for secrets manager, then select the read write policy and hit next. Give your role a name, hit create, then navigate back to the RDS proxy tab. Hit refresh, choose the IAM role that we just created, then click on create a new secret. Select credentials for RDS database, then enter admin user and password. Choose database 11, then hit next and give your secret a name. Hit next, then hit store and navigate back to the RDS proxy window. Click on refresh, then select the secret that we just created. Choose required for IAM authentication, then select require TLS. Make sure your default VPC subnets and security groups are selected, then hit create proxy. Give it a few minutes for your RDS proxy to come up, then go inside it and confirm that the status says available. Note, if your associated database status says unavailable, that means you'll have to wait some more time. Next, let's head to the Lambda service, then click on create function and give it a name. I'm going to choose Python 3.10 from the runtime dropdown, then hit create function. Navigate to the configuration tab, then click on permissions, then click on your execution role. Choose attach policies from the add permissions dropdown, then search for Lambda VPC. Select the Lambda VPC access execution role, then hit add permissions. Head back to the Lambda tab, click on VPC, then hit edit. Select the default VPC, default subnets, and default security group, then hit save. Next. Click on database proxies in the left menu, then hit add database proxy. Choose the database proxy that we just created, then hit add. Confirm that your database proxy status says available, then navigate to the code tab. Here, I'm going to copy paste pre-written Python code, but first, let me replace the host value with the actual database proxy endpoint. The code starts by importing MySQL connector, Boro3, and OS modules. Inside the Lambda handler on line 11, I'm initializing the RDS client. Then on line 13, I'm using the generate DB auth token method to grab the database token. On line 20, I'm using the MySQL connector connect method 
to connect to the RDS proxy. Note, for the password, I'm passing the database token that we generated earlier. On line 24, I'm initializing the cursor. Then on line 26, I'm executing this SQL command, which says, select host, user, and select privileges from the user table, where the user is equal to admin. On line 29, I'm printing the output of my select statement, followed by closing the cursor and the connection and returning success. Hit deploy, then click on test and invoke to invoke your Lambda function. Looks like we're running into unable to import MySQL module error. This means that the MySQL module is not available in the current runtime. To fix this, let's head to the Cloud9 service, then click on Create Environment. Give your environment a name. I'm going to leave everything else to their default values, then hit Create. Click Open, then give it a few minutes for your Cloud9 environment to come up. Click on the AWS icon in the left menu, then find your Lambda function in the Explorer tree. Right-click on it, then hit Download to your default folder, and you should see a message appear on the very top which says downloading your Lambda function. Navigate to the bash terminal and type in the ls or the list command to confirm that you see your Lambda folder there. Go inside your Lambda folder and confirm that you see the lambda underscore function dot py file. Next, type pip3 install mysql connector python hyphen hyphen target followed by a period. This is telling the Python installer to install the MySQL connector Python package in the current directory. Hit enter, then run the ls command and confirm that you see MySQL connector in all its dependencies installed in the current directory. Next, right click on your Lambda function, then hit upload and choose directory. Select the upload a zip option then choose your Lambda function's parent folder and hit open. Click on yes, give it some time, and you should see a message at the very top which says uploaded your Lambda function. Now, let's head back to our Lambda tab and click on refresh, then navigate to the test tab. Click on test to execute your Lambda function then expand the details section. Looks like our Lambda function timed out after three seconds. To fix this, let's head to the configuration tab, then click on general configuration. Hit edit, increase the timeout to 30 seconds, then click on save. Let's head back to the test tab and click on test again to re-execute our Lambda function. Expand the details section and confirm that you see the output of your select query in the execution logs without any errors. There you have it. But before you go, here's a question for you. Why did the database server go to a yoga class?